Welcome to The Shooting Show and a very happy Christmas to all. This week, I'm on a solo ptarmigan shooting foray in the Argyllshire Highlands and lead camera, Becky Bailey, has put together the 2014 outtakes in an interesting blooper reel. It's another day in the Highlands and this morning we are heading to the bloody Lochan below Ben Finlay before the steady ascent to the scree above for a crack at the ptarmigan. We'll have to push through the Glenative Forest to reach the Lochan and it's a steep pull through the heavy timber. Luckily part of the journey can be completed by Argo. turns out to be blocked. A particularly boisterous storm has brought some significant trees down, but we haven't come unprepared. The chainsaw growls to life and makes short work of the intruding foliage, and we're soon on our way again. Now we've reached the open hill and those on foot will be making their way over Damdal Ridge to get to the hidden lock for a spot of wild trout fishing. We're fishing Lochan Nefurla, which is uh, Gaelic for the bloody Lochan. There's some history to the place. In the 1600s, the Glencoe Massacre. Uh, the legend is the uh, murdering Campbells, after putting to the sword, the Macdonalds came over the hill here and washed all the blood um, off them in, in, in the Lochan. Uh, I quite like it up here. It's wild hill trout fishing. Uh, small hill trout, three or four to the pound, but uh, they fight above the weight. Uh, today I'm using Clan Chieftain, uh, size 12, traditional wet uh, for the Scottish Hill Locks and I've just pulled three out so I'm going to stick with this one. A brace and half of trout is enough for me. I'm itching to get up the hill and have a crack at the ptarmigan. Keeping a weather eye on the high tops, I watch cautiously as the mist rolls in and out, but quickly make the decision to try the ascent. Leaving the trout into my companions, I lose a layer in advance of the hot work to come and head up the hill. I'm convinced there will be ptarmigan on the scree line, and even though the fog has rolled in again, we try our luck as the weather is clearly changeable. The lower scree looks promising and the cloud cover is obliged by dissipating, for now. So it's shirt sleeve order in the weak sunshine and mild, unseasonable temperatures as I begin my search for the snow grouse. 
Dumping the heavy pack once we reach the highest scree, we watch as the fog rolls back in, obscuring our view as the wind blasts the high tops. Fickle weather indeed. Weather is another thing to take seriously on these hills, the worst eventuality being death, from exposure or slipping on a rain-greased ledge and taking an unplanned freefall. Good local knowledge is imperative and your safety should never be compromised. Always be in control of the situation while on the hill and be ready for all eventualities. It's hard work timing and shooting. Uh, it's a lot of walking, a lot of uphill pulls, but it's worth it to get uh, you know, the wildest of Britain's wildest game birds. It's my favourite quarry species. A brace is enough to take off any hill. Uh, and the hard one. What a beautiful bird, and uh, you certainly won't get one any wilder. What you need really is uh, a 20 bore is good, uh, a light gun, because uh, you, you carry, have to carry everything with you that you need. Uh, today I'm using actually a 12 bore, but it's a 525 light, so it's, it's quite a light gun. Uh, I specifically use it for timing and shooting. I'm using Ely VIPs, uh, 32 gram sixes. Uh, absolutely perfect for this job. Then after that it was some 30 minutes, 40 minutes and we flushed a trio up on the scree. I hit one bird and went over the edge. I attempt to retrieve the fallen bird. It's every ethical hunter's responsibility to seek out fallen game and put down any wounded quarry. got into where, where I thought she was and then she, she ran on and flushed and I managed to put her down which was good. On these crags it would be folly to use a dog that would have every chance of disappearing over a precipice. It's hard work going up and down these gradients but it's every sportsman's duty to recover what he's shot. If in doubt, don't shoot. This sport is truly one of the wildest to be found in Britain. The solitude of ptarmigan shooting is absolute, with often only a raven, eagle or just the wind for company. The ptarmigan themselves are incredibly well camouflaged, having only to crouch and sit still in the grey rocks to become invisible. Both eagle and man overlook their plumage among the scree. Indeed, this is their only defence against aerial attack. Four hours of fishing and hiking means but two hours of work in the screes and ridges if one is to safely descend the mountain in daylight, as getting caught out on these crags in the darkness is not to be recommended. Then we went on and it would be a good couple of hours before we found the birds again. Uh, some difficult ground on the scree, uh, flushed a covey, uh, my shooting wasn't up to standard and uh, I missed. Then after that uh, we picked up another bird and flushed, got a left and a right. Fantastic. The ptarmigan's plumage is almost impossible to seek out amid the scree. Their movement is what gives them away, and once they swap their grey feathers for white, they are ready for the winter. Finding a white bird against new snow is, as one would expect, remarkably difficult. The bird that bounced over the edge proved to be a challenging retrieve. I searched high and low and eventually located it teetering on the edge of a 200 foot precipice. It was a hard won game bird indeed. Well what a superb end to a fantastic day on the hill at Ptarmigan. That's my two brace for the day, you can't get better than that. We've seen a lot of birds. I finished with a superb right and a left, I'm very pleased about that and it'll be a long time before I'm back again at the time again, so it was a great ending. What it is now is a long, long walk back down to the car.
a red letter day at the time we get on the high tops there. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Guard against white hat bias. That's the latest advice from shooting organisations. But it's got nothing to do with headwear choices. White hat bias is where subjective opinions are allowed to skew the evidence in support of particular policy aims. Basque has warned that subjective bias risks affecting research into shooting-related issues more and more as a general election approaches. Lead shot is a key example. Chief Exec Richard Ali said Basque would work harder than ever to stamp it out. Licence fees are in the spotlight once again in Northern Ireland, and Basque is fighting for the rights of shooters in Ulster. At a recent firearms licensing fees workshop in Stormont, the Department of Justice suggested that the cost of processing a licence is £131, but Basque analysed the evidence and found a number of errors that overstated actual costs. Northern Irish ministers admitted that the DOJ clearly still has a lot of work to do. Voting is now open for Airgun Shooter magazine's Airgun of the Year awards. Categories cover everything from CO2 pistols and gas ram guns to springers and pre-charged pneumatics, plus the coveted Airgun of the Year title. To vote for your favourite airguns of 2014, visit airgunmagazine.co.uk, click on Airgun Awards and fill in the voting form. Voting closes at midnight on the 31st of December. Basque has released a new paper outlining the unintended consequences of licensing grouse moors. An unnecessary licensing system would have adverse impacts on biodiversity, conservation and rural economies, says the organisation. Chairman Alan Jarrett said campaigns to introduce a licensing system are not based on sound evidence and have not been thought through. More like this in Modern Gamekeeping magazine. And finally, the third issue of digital shooting magazine iShoot is out now. Packed from cover to cover with festive shooting action, it's ready to download straight to your computer or tablet. This issue, there's a driven moose hunt in Scandinavia, walked up woodcock on the Scottish borders, ptarmigan at 3,000 feet, a pro foxing masterclass and much more. Head to iShootMag.com to download it for free now. That was the Shooting Show News. Welcome to the Shooting Show. This week it's a game of two halves. We're shooting pointers. No we're not, we don't shoot pointers, we shoot grouse. Okay, the uh, Hatsan Escort. <laughs> Kicking off the list in 10 is a diminutive Muntjac. Oh, f f f Heat. Heat. Kicking off the list at number 10 is a Muntjac deer with forest director Jost Arnold. Jost. No, because oh, we, we've we got to download all this. You have to stop it. Look. Stop the f moving! That's a wrap, everybody. <laughs> Wes Stanton, executive producer of the USS Starship Enterprise. Now, the 30 uh, inch barrel on this gun is actually made from. <laughs> it has drop out triggers. Now, have loosened this. It should come out pretty easily. All we need now is the pigeons. F***ing job. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> okay, we're fishing Loch and Nefola, which is Gaelic for uh, the bloody Loch and. <laughs> Stop looking so serious. On the second half, we have some shit hot shooting. That was a shit hot shot. Dignity restored. To see if Nick Hollick can work out any any kinks that I've been having now that I've switched to left shoulder. Ooh. Any kinks? Shut up! <laughs> 
my name's Davey and I'm a rubbish keeper. And so what was the grouse like when he first got here? <laughs> You're not gonna get this with you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. Tosser. The safety warnings and instructions in this booklet are very important. We've got, uh, it's across a flat field. That's my wife. <laughs> Welcome to the shooting show. Filming you. Filming me. Oh. Now this browning is just another. <laughs> no, I can't. Did you get me back on my nose there? Have I? <laughs> Did you say that? Yeah. Great bogey coming up my nose. Independence or something. <laughs> yeah, that's on camera now. Freedom! <laughs> Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And have a very happy Christmas.